brothers and sisters. We pray that thou would bring us to thy eternal kingdom, that we may walk together hand in hand through the gates of paradise. Martin cannot leave now. Get me to the office. I need a phone. Let us now read the 23rd Psalm. I'm Lyndon Johnson. Where are y'all from? Nigeria, sir. Well, great. I hear that's a wonderful place to be from. See, this lady here is your wife? Yes, sir. Good. But I have not yet met Mrs. Ladybird. Well, you must. We'll do that right away. Come on. Bird? Mon français n'est pas parfait, mais c'est peut-être une question d'accent. Oh, mais vous parlez français très bien, madame. Ah, vous êtes très gentil, merci. Hello. I hope you're enjoying in Washington as much as we are. Excellent. It is an honor for us to be here. No, the honor is ours, believe me. Mr. Kennedy, you cannot allow this to continue. In the name of God Almighty, have this stopped. I have my people in this church. They are small children of God. Their mothers, their fathers, they are good people. They are innocent. Why are you doing nothing? Why? Martin, I know, I know, I know. Please. And please don't say I did nothing. You know, as well as I know, that if it wasn't for those U.S. Marshals, you'd be dead as a doornail. We will stay here until they burn down this house of God. And if Washington will not come here, then we will go to Washington. Let God's fire blaze out those who hearts are full of hate. Sometimes I get discouraged and I feel my work is in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. All right, thank you. I'm going to ask the nation for restraint, for judgment. For a cooling off period? Yes. It'll cool. It had better. Well, you think the people will listen to an appeal for calm? They will hear it. I don't know if they'll heed it. What do you think, Dave? We gotta try. Try? I've been trying. I told King you'd be dead if it weren't for the marshals we sent down. What did he say? He doesn't understand. I don't think he understands us at all. What's important is that the nation understand. And that they understand that you're walking a tightrope. And we can't be knocked off. We won't be knocked off. There's too much at stake. Do you realize that Dr. Martin Luther King is a fornicator? with white women and a communist. This is the man who's a friend of the Kennedys. But the Attorney General does not prevent me from finding the truth. The truth. I could be in Europe, you know, by accident. Yes, but I, uh... I won't have a chance to see you. When do I get to see you? Please don't pressure me. You want to see me, don't you? Yes, but uh, don't use this number again, okay? I'll call you. I could be in Europe, you know, by accident. Yes, but I, uh, I won't have I a chance. I want the file on the last 24 hours. Now? Now, boy. Names of all the hotels he uses. Friends in Chicago, Washington, Palm Springs. Files on John Cana, Rosselli. Latin American connections, vice connections. Does she have a mother? I'll have to check out if she has a mother. Look, boy, I have a mother. You have a mother. There is no man alive that doesn't have a mother of some description. And a description is what I want. Have men watch the mother, too. I want bank accounts, laundry bills. I want to know who makes the hotel reservations, doctor's reports. 
I want more on that woman than she could give us if she were sitting right here now. More than she even knows about herself. Above all, I want every final detail of the minutes, the hours, the days she spent with Kennedy. So, when I say I want the file, I mean the full file. We'll do our best, sir. Don't say that to me! <clears throat> You sound like a man who can't deliver if you say you will try your best. I assume you have been doing your best. Bring in everything on the woman. Will you stop apologizing to me? And make sure she is never, never, never lost sight of. She isn't a person. She's a file. Well, it's ridiculous. 3,600 combat troops won't seduce them. I mean, you can't win a woman by uh, slapping her face, and that's what the uh, Pentagon wants me to do. Use the cover of military advisors. Send in military advisors. Well, you uh, can't appease the communists. Uh, I think Kenny's right. Quietly prop up DM with military advisors and uh, a few Green Berets. Keep control of the situation. No need for a commitment that's open-ended. No need for a war. Just keep control. How many do I send? Well, uh... Just enough to show that we mean business without being aggressive uh, or ruthless. Shall we say uh, 100 uh, military advisors and uh, 400 Green Berets? What do you think can be won if the whole thing escalates? I don't know. No one does. General MacArthur said you can't win a land war in Asia, and I agree with that. So uh, how do we persuade our own people here at home that... Uh, the United States is prepared uh, for a guerrilla war 12,000 miles away. And you can't win with counterinsurgency unless you have intelligence. And uh, how do we know what the uh, peasants think? We don't. I'm not sure how we find out. And then you have to win over a DM. There are those at state and defense who believe in counterinsurgency. They believe that the whole thing can be won in under two years. Yes, they told me 18 months, but do uh, you think we can believe them? I don't know. I don't know. Neither do I. <clears throat> All right, let's, uh, let's start from the beginning again now. Uh, Ambassador uh, Frederick Nolting has gone over there, and uh, he is pro-DM. Now, uh, would there be any advantage to my going over there as well uh, sometime in the near future? Well, we should go to Europe first. First things first, let's not uh, confuse things. One uh, continent at a time. All right. What about Lyndon? He's always coming in here, complaining he has nothing to do. Uh, we can send him to Saigon, and uh, you can go with him, Steve. Me? Yes. You'll go as the uh, president's brother-in-law. Are you serious, Mr. President? I'm very serious. You'll take Gene. It's a good idea. You guys will make it a party. Yeah, make it family. You're the uh, president's brother-in-law. I'm aware of that, Bob, but how does that qualify me to go to Saigon with Johnson? You're better qualified than him. <laughs> <laughs> you tell them that we're not withdrawing from Vietnam. Well, why is that necessary if you're sending over a whole lot more military? Because we're not saying as many as everyone wants us to, and uh, they are not military, they are military advisors. Except Lyndon, but he'll be giving them advice, too. <laughs> he'll be giving them hell. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, so at least we have uh, agreed on that. Thank you. Yes, Mrs. Lincoln, uh, would you uh, please contact the vice president and uh, have him come to my office tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock? Thank you very much. I don't really know if we can win a guerrilla war. Do you? You don't uh, believe in the methods? Well, I just think that uh, somehow it's so very strange uh, to have a Marine from Vermont or Denver or anywhere believe himself that uh, he can beat an Asian in his own territory when that sort of fighting is in their blood, in their guts. But I suppose we have to try. Well, you're not going to give up on it? No, I can't. I mean, I can't see any other way out of Vietnam now. Can you? Mr. President, I'm not sure about taking the Smiths along, too. Why? Why not? It's only a gesture. Well, what do I call your brother-in-law? Whatever you like. A uh, member of the family, uh, the man from state, uh, whatever. A and his wife? Just call her the uh, president's little sister, Jean. <laughs> what do I tell DM? 
Listen to him first. Find out what he wants. What about protection? Just let him know, reassure him that uh, we'll help protect his country. That's not what I mean. I mean, what about my protection? I wouldn't be concerned about your career. It's safe, I promise you, Lyndon. Mr. President, I do not want to go. You don't understand. I, I know why you're sending me out there. That's all right. That's my problem. That's my career problem. But that's a dirty place, Saigon. There's a lot of people getting shot out there, and I just don't want to be one of them. I wouldn't worry about that, Lyndon. They're more likely to shoot uh, Steve and Gene. Look, what we need to place there is your kind of down-to-earth approach and style, your kind of confidence. You can sell them on the Mekong Valley Project. Tell them you're an old river man yourself. I can't think of a better man in this administration to help solve the Vietnam problem more than Lyndon Baines Johnson. That's very kind of you, Mr. President. Then you'll go. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lyndon. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> we'll issue a press release uh, this afternoon. Very well. I don't think Manchester's going too far with the book. All he says is some of my poetry's like Emily Dickinson. That seems all right. Yes, but I am not St. Augustine. Now, he doesn't say you are. He says you're as frank as St. Augustine. Frank was Augustine. Well, pretty frank, by all accounts. What was that thing he said about, make me a saint, Lord, but not quite yet? Yeah, well, maybe he meant something else. <laughs> you ought to know. No, really, I don't think it's so bad. I mean, he compares you to Caesar and Napoleon, Tacitus, too. Oh, I don't want people believing that sort of stuff. Well, they're not going to believe it, but it's all right if they think it. 